In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Say hello to the return of disks, which are being developed to store petabits of data. Optical data storage was all the rage in the 90s and early 2000s. It's things like CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray. And it's made by a laser beam encoding data directly onto the disk. And then a laser in your computer reads that data as it spins. The issue with them is that they couldn't store much data, like five to eight gigs. And when you can just buy an external hard drive that stores a tera for only 70 bucks, people prefer that. So a team of scientists are developing what's called AIE DTPR. A terrible acronym, but great idea, that basically just thickens the disk with more layers and uses molecules to absorb light on a nanoscale. So instead of relying on wavelengths of light, this is creating data a tenth of the size of the light used to make it, which allows information to be more densely stored on the petabit level. One petabit is 125 terabyte. You would need a six foot stack or one Keanu Reeves <laughs> of drives to get that same amount of data. The disks take up less space, last longer, and aren't prone to sudden power surges. The hope is something like all of ChatGPT's training could fit into one of these hideous things that I totally had in my car instead of massive data centers. This to me is so interesting because not even, I wanna say 15 years ago, I was having this conversation with a good construction buddy of mine and I'm like, I, I don't understand why they don't just make the disc thicker. If they made the disc thicker, it could store more data. And my friend was like, oh, well, that's just impossible. It's just not going to happen. Look where we're going because it's happening. This makes so much sense to me. The only thing that they're going to have to do, which they've done many times in the past, they're going to have to increase or upgrade the devices that hold these disks. They're going to have to have a thicker slot. They're going to have to have a denser laser to read the, the data that's on the disk. But this to me, exciting information for me. I guess that's kind of my nerd passion. I'm really big into this stuff. And I this is a told you so moment. If you're watching this, I know who you are. If you're watching this, I told you so. The big scary thing though, is if that disc gets scratched, woo, you've done lost a lot of information. 72 hours on a water fast, there's evidence that your own stem cells are starting to increase in number in blood circulation. Remember, your stem cells, which are the same age as the host, so they're as old as you are, they're held inside of your bone marrow. They're held inside of a lot of our long bones and our hips. They're held in our femur. And they're released into the bloodstream. And when they enter the bloodstream, they hunt around for tissues that are damaged or inflamed. So after 72 hours, the evidence is conclusive that your stem cell levels begin to rise and circulate in your bloodstream and your immune cells are becoming refreshed. So there's an entire myriad of benefits to intermittent fasting and water fasting. Remember, this isn't for everybody. You should check with your doctor before you do a, a water fast or before you do any caloric restriction. I'm extremely interested on doing something like this. I have fasted in the past when I used to work out a lot, but it wasn't just strictly water. I used to do it off, off of a calorie balance. Like I would say, okay, I want to eat 1200 calories between this time frame and that time frame and have X amount of hours where I don't eat anything but only drink water throughout that time. But to 72 hours of fasting with just water, that sounds crazy to me. I think I might starve, but I realistically do not think that that's going to happen. I'm a fairly thick guy. So I'm interested about doing something like this. Have any of you tried fasting like this or even longer? You need to tell me that when you're reading, you see like a movie in your head. Yeah. How many times are we going to have to go over this? You are literally seeing things in your mind. That sounds crazy. I used to have a problem with reading and being able to visualize of uh, what's happening in the story because my mind was so focused on reading, especially if I was reading internally. But as I gotten older, there was a book series that was introduced to me. It's called The Dresden Files. When I started re reading that book, I could imagine so much happening in the story that was being told. If none, if any of you've never heard of the Dresden Files and are not afraid of reading about wizards and and all different types of monsters in a Chicago setting in modern era, I highly recommend those books. They're fantastic. But I I can now visually see a story being played out as I read it if I really focus hard enough but it, I still have a hard time visualizing when I'm reading a book but it does happen for me hold six flags because Texas has been 
ruled under six different flags in the course of their oh, okay. state's history. Okay. They originally were part of Spain, so they were flown under okay. the Spanish flag. Then they were origin- Then they were French, so they were flown under the French flag. Then Mexico. Then they were their own country, the Republic of Texas. They were fully their own country. They still were, huh? For, they were their own country for nine years. Wow. Then the Confederate. So they okay. were part of the Confederacy. And then America. So they've, been, they've lived wow. under six flags. And so that's why... Not, I don't think a lot of people know that six flags... The, no, I never knew that. The company is and called why that. would they know that? <laughs> I don't know why I know yeah, that Yeah, that's either, pretty but. scary. So <laughs> the guy who did Six Flags Great Adventure commercials. Hey, I didn't know this. This was new information to me, but I bet there's some people that are watching this that are from Texas that are screaming right now that this is just common knowledge. Hey, the more you know, though. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video, and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph, you'll see that 19.9% of the viewers that watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. But 80% of the viewers that watch my videos, they're not subscribed, but keep coming back for more of my content. So to the 19.9% that are subscribed, Thank you so much. And on top of that, being that this is the 100th video that I have made on this channel, I want to say thank you to everyone that has followed along this journey of mine on learning new conspiracies, new theories, and just having a good time along the way. I've talked to so many cool people in the comments. I really appreciate every single one of you truthfully. And being that this is the 100th video, Tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be releasing episode 101 so that you guys can watch it at a later hour. Just in case 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is a little too early for you, the later crowd can probably pick that up and it not be such a hard time to watch. So I hope to see you in the next video that I release today. Who is Enoch? Enoch is half human, half Anunnaki, according to some of the text. So he's a quote-unquote demigod, supposedly. So he was... The, 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 his, his father was a god with a lowercase g, and his mother was a human being. He was special. And these beings that came to visit gave him an appointed date that he would be taken away from Earth. And so he got taken away from Earth, and he, he didn't describe the shape of the Earth, the size, the color, everything from space. A gigantic blue glowing sphere. He's then brought back at some point in the future. In the Bible, it seems as if he just disappeared from Earth, and he was taken into heaven and never came back. But that's not the case. And the in the book of Enoch, you find out he was brought back. Oh. He said Enoch. Enoch is half human, half Anunnaki, according to some of the texts. So he's a quote unquote demigod, supposedly. So he was the, the, the his his father was a god with a lowercase g, and his mother was a human being. He was special. And these beings that came to visit gave him an appointed date that he would be taken away from Earth. And so he got taken away from Earth, and he he didn't describe the shape of the earth, the size, the color, everything from space, a gigantic blue glowing sphere. He's then brought back at some point in the future. In the Bible, it seems as if he just disappeared from earth and he was taken into heaven and never came back, but that's not the case. In the, in the book of Enoch, you find out he was brought back. Pretty interesting. <laughs> but also what's interesting about Enoch is uh, he came back with some advanced knowledge and understanding about construction techniques. Okay. So all of a sudden, this guy understands and knows how to build megalithic structures. Who taught him this information? Wherever he went, he became a student. And they brought him back, and he had this knowledge and this wisdom. Hey, I haven't played some Billy Carson in a while, so I thought that I would add this one in here because I, it brought up a really interesting point that I would like to ask the audience that view this. I know there's a lot of people that watch my content that do believe in the Book of Enoch. But I also have a lot of people that watch my content and believe that the earth is flat. If you believe in the book of Enoch, and according to what this individual is saying, pretty much verifies that it's a, that it's a globe-shaped planet, do you believe in the globe earth or are you a flat earther still? Or do you not believe in the book of Enoch if you are a flat earther? Please let me know in the comments because that's a pretty good question that I didn't even consider. I didn't know that the book of Enoch described the earth being round. He said something. I asked him five things. Of course, have we been visited by aliens? Okay, I think that was second or third. <laughs> and uh, well, His what, answer was, we're a very response. religious country. Now, I've heard that five times at NASA. Mm. That's a very strange answer, isn't it? What's the answer? Sorry, I missed We're a very religious country. Huh. Is it the weirdest? Okay. What is, what is that even? Because imply? it upsets the idea of God. We're desensitized. 
you know, uh, when they announced that their the, the secret group at the Pentagon was talking to uh, Intel Committee about they have real actual footage of these things that are going at supersonic speeds and turning on a dime and doing 300 Gs, which is impossible. There's no propulsion systems, hmm. and these are documented real. There's like they're saying these are things of not of this planet. Yeah, I've, and, I've seen some. When of that clear. comes out. To me, that was a huge day. But yeah. everyone's like, oh, I'm bored of it. You know, this is during the pandemic. It was August. During the I, pandemic. I remember. I remember, remember that? Yeah. To me, I was like, I was so excited. Yeah. And people are like, oh, we've seen so many alien movies. Yeah, I know growing up, that was a really hard question to ask a lot of people because they would get so, I want to say, I don't, I don't want to say offended, but they got very defensive over that question because it almost sounded like I was disproving God or questioning God. And really, I, I didn't feel like I was. I just don't know much about the Bible at that time. Watching movies and stuff, I guess that could be technically a deceitful thing, giving me the idea that there's aliens and that's just what they want to fill the heads of everybody to believe. It just made me question, why could there not be aliens if there is a God? Why couldn't God create aliens as well? So it is an interesting topic that a lot of people like to avert back to that we are a religious organization or we believe in God only and God doesn't create aliens. But to me, if God created Earth and everything that I see on Earth and in the space or the firmament, if you will, there could potentially be aliens too. And if there are aliens, I wouldn't dismiss that God created them. Realities. Let's just throw something out that people never heard of, just so they could chew on it. Okay. Every time you make a decision, you know, the energy goes into both uh, possibilities. Everything is probabilities and possibilities. Everyone in their life comes into crossroads, as I call them, where you can go one way or the other way. And you make put energy into this other decision. Maybe it's, should I get married? Should I get a divorce? Should I change jobs? You have possibilities. So you put the energy into one or the other. Okay, you make a decision, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. What happens to the energy you have put into the other decision? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always wondered about that because I'm always split in my mind because I'm almost doing both at the same time. But what happens to the other decision? You put a lot of energy into focusing on it. Right, so what happens? That becomes a reality also. That's what I've always thought, and no one ever said that, because and I feel as if I'm living that reality as well. Well, you're not supposed to know that, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> but when it splits off, another you is living the other reality. Mm. But it's not that simple. Mm -hmm. That's a simple explanation. Because it means every time you make any decision, even a small one, it splits off again and again and like, again. Like, should I say this or should I, as opposed to that? You yeah. Know, it's like every minute. Everything. Huh? So it splits again and again. So finally, you have thousands of you out mm -hmm. there living in different realities and different lives. And I've had some clients that know they are living in another life, in another uh, state or something. But we're not supposed to focus on that because it'd be too confusing. I've heard of this theory before. I think it's pretty interesting and very, very complex and chaotic in a way. Like every single decision, maybe, for example, I didn't feel like making a YouTube video today. That means there's probably another world where I did make a YouTube and then there's probably another world where I made two YouTubes, by the way. This is my 100th video that I've done on YouTube, and today there is going to be a special thing. It's really complex and, and perplexing. I, I find it interesting, but I don't know if I necessarily believe it. So I guess what I'm going... So with that being said, what do you guys think about this theory? Do you think that that is a plausible or realistic theory that every decision that you make splits off into an alternate reality and that that life in that reality is continuing where that decision was made? To me, that sounds a little far-fetched. The intelligent things that we found in the ocean that are real are dolphins and orcas. Yeah. And whales. But like, and what about... Um, dolphins and orcas are crazy intelligent. But like octopuses too, yeah, right? that's true too. Yeah. But, but none of them... The octopus are very smart. But none of them have ever figured out how to make things. Like make houses and cars and ships. And it's, it's all like... They're out in the wild. 
there's no houses. I used to do a bit about uh, how dangerous the ocean is because there's no doors. I'm like, there's no doors. No, no. matter what, it's just there's fucking caves. sharks and crabs and no doors. Yeah. And everywhere you look, everything is eating everything. Yeah. It's literal murder soup. Because and they all eat each other. It's a ladder of eating. Yeah. Just everything goes up and, and eats something. And at the top, you have killer whales that are eating whales. They eat everything. But what if we're missing something? What if we don't see it? What if we are too stupid? What if we're just like rock monkeys? Yeah. And they're just like, they can't see down here. These guys have no fucking clue. You know when you're in a tinted car and someone's like... I've always wondered if maybe there was so much down in the ocean that we just can't see because we cannot reach those depths. And the depths that we have reached, we've had to be very specific on how we get to those places. It wouldn't surprise me if there is old structures, just things like that. And the whales and stuff don't necessarily apply to that. Just like how we have birds and wild animals that lurk around here. What lives in those structures that are built in the bottom of the ocean, if there are any? That's what I would like to know. Could it be mermaids? Could it be a different life form of human species? Like, I would really like to know that. It's always upset me that NASA does not fund ocean exploration like i they might fund it they're so focused on space why not try to do stuff in the ocean i feel like if we could master ocean exploration we could master anything else that we, that's thrown our way what do you guys think about this do you think that there's underwater life aside from the sea creatures that we are aware of or do you think it's just plain ocean nothing down there but darkness and scary creatures They've been cloning uh, animals for quite quite a while, and in the hybrid programs uh, that I was associated with, they were cloning not only uh, species like plants and animals, but they were also regenerating tissues uh, of, of extraterrestrials and growing them and then cloning them. And then they started cloning humans uh, uh -huh. a very long time ago. It's interesting now that in the news, um, after talking about this a few times, that now they're coming forward. China just has been doing it forever, but in their underground facilities, cloning people and um, cloning, uh, of course, you heard about, they cloned their first primate. And hey, if they can clone a primate, uh, this verifies what I'm talking about, well, they can definitely clone a human. And they're also growing humans for organs. And um, you know, there's a big controversy behind this. But clones are everywhere. Human, extraterrestrial, they're wandering all over. You know, some people refer to these as doppelgangers because mm -hmm. they can they can grow a human to look like someone and mind program and implant them with circuitry and things like this. And they will really think they had this life and implant them into a business or uh, into you know whatever organization they want. This is an interesting topic. I have always believed that cloning has been a thing for years, longer than my existence. 30 plus years. I have a feeling cloning has been around for a long time. I also believe that there is extremely, extremely wealthy people that have themselves cloned at birth. If you're a royal family and you have a child, you're going to have that child cloned three to four times. Just in case we ever gain the technology to transfer our conscious into another body. That way they have spare bodies just in case something happens. We have not reached that level of technology though. We have the, the cloning tech capabilities, but we do not have conscious transfer capabilities. But I have a feeling there's some high elites out there that have prepared for when that happens. What do you guys think about this theory? The color blue was never written down. Weird. Like in the Bible and like all this, like blue was never a word. Weird. And they would always just- They didn't have a word for that color? No. And so, but like when they would describe like the ocean yeah. and stuff like that, they would describe it as like green. What? And yeah. And so the theory is if you can't connect a word with a color, can you not see that color? 
because your brain. And so they did an experiment <laughs> in this tribe and they also have never heard the word blue. And so they gave this graph and it's this graph of like 12 squares and they're all green, right? And then there's a one that's like a bluish green and they had these people look at it and they were staring at it and it took them so long to figure out which color because they don't know what to look for in the blue. It yeah. was weird. And then they showed another one and it was all green and then there was one square that was just like a shade lighter of a green but it was hard for us to see and they could spot it instantly. Wow. Because they have like over 30 words for green. Oh my gosh. The brain is tricky. This is an interesting theory, but I thought the Bible did reference blue uh, a, a number of times. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that the Bible, at least modern day Bibles, do reference blue. And also for those people that live in villages and stuff, would the Bible even apply to them? Would they even know what the Bible is? They probably have their own belief systems aside from the Bible. Do you think NPCs are actually real? Like some people yes. don't have souls? Yes, I 100% believe that. As a matter of fact, to take a Bible term, 144, I think there's uh, basically 144 million people on earth with souls. And I think the rest are NPCs. And considering there's 7 billion people on the planet, that tells you a lot. I think the NPCs are here to keep us in line. The ones with souls to make sure if you have a great idea, oh no, that's not going to work, dude. Give it up, man. They're here to keep you down, deflate you. And sometimes NPCs can be in the same family, too. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? They, they want to keep you down. Like, whenever you have this grand idea. Here, here's the thing about me. I remember um, in 2001 when I started doing numerology and astrology, and I saw something here. You know, all the all the numerologists of that time were broke. Um, you know, it wasn't really a place where I had mentors or anything like that. And I said I was going to, you know, make this famous and I was going to basically make a living off this. And I have. And, I, and just so you guys know, because I know some people only respect good capitalism and I am a good capitalist. I'm a millionaire many, many times over. I live in a very, very expensive area code. And when it comes down to it, money's not an issue. I'm not bragging. What I'm basically trying to say is what I do works. Well, other than the fact that he's not bragging about being a millionaire many times over, to the NPC theory, I've never heard that there was only 144,000 people with souls and the rest are NPCs. That is mind-boggling to me if that's the case. I, I do, in a sense, believe that there is NPCs, if you will. I, I think that's kind of a rude term to put that type of person I feel like there is people that are not as open-minded. They're very straightforward. I would not necessarily call them non-playable characters, but they are a individual that can hold you back if you're not aware of them being a NPC, if you will. But I don't know. The people that I have ran across more or less are during when I'm driving or when I'm out shopping at a store. There's just a lot of people that act a little different than what I'm used to normal people acting, to be honest. Not saying that they're doing trends like they were showing in this video. They just seem very straightforward. Maybe they're maybe I'm the NPC and they're the normal ones and I'm just looking at them odd, <laughs> you know? But it's also my biggest thing is when it comes to driving. There's a lot of people out there that drive like they aren't a real person to me. Like they're so crazy on the road. It's just like, do you not have a thought going in your head of fear? Like you might run over somebody or might accidentally hit a deer because you're driving 120 miles an hour down the road. That kind of stuff makes me wonder if people even think. Have you guys seen this new image of our sun that we captured? This was with a $344 million telescope out of Maui. It looks like we got these little kernels of caramelized popcorn, doesn't it? Okay, so these, this is plasma, size of France. We've had a lot of guys ask questions about our sun. Could it be a portal? Could it be connected to all the other stars through this plasmic web? And what is plasma? These ionically charged clouds of gas with protons, electrons, and neutrons, are they all talking to each other? We know our Earth talks to the sun constantly. And this is changing everything that's going on down here on Earth with our spatial coordinates, with our weather. It is also affecting something around our field that Rupert Sheldrake calls the morphogenetic field. This is an electromagnetic field around the Earth that holds the building blocks of all life that's shaping and molding life around our planet. There's some people out there like Bert Hellinger that made something called family constellation therapy, where they're doing 
counseling modalities that tap into this intelligent field of information to, f to heal you, to heal your genetics. In fact, what we believe is that it might be communicating directly with your DNA. What is DNA? Your DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. It has 64 codons. Some of those are redundant codons. In fact, it's so well designed, it looks like, our, it looks like an intelligent designer was behind it, that even guys like Richard Dawkins, the staunch, the staunch atheist, he's now said that he believes extraterrestrials are behind it. You should put him on ancient aliens. It communicates with RNA, ribonucleic acid. There's an intelligent conversation going on there, and we have also proteins and amino acids that are being exchanged. But why I think that's fascinating is that according to Dr. Bruce Lipton in his epigenetics theories, he believes that your DNA is an antenna. It's receiving the information from somewhere. That's pretty interesting. Now, I'm not going to lie. That picture of the sun kind of looked like a, a Quaker Oats bar. <laughs> but aside from that, it did lead me to theorize about some things. What if the sun is the ending tail of a black hole? Like, they say that the black hole can absorb everything, but they don't know what's on the other side. What if on the other side of the black hole is a sun? That's where all the energy mass is being burnt and disposed of. That would be a pretty cool theory and would also help tie into space travel. Maybe that is how other extraterrestrial beings travel through time and space. They travel through black holes, exit out the sun. And that would be pretty interesting. But again, I don't even know how the sun works. I really don't know how black holes work. I don't know if I even trust the science and theories behind a black hole. It's like we can't even physically see a black hole up close, but they have all these theories around how black holes work that they hold almost to accuracy, which I, I, that drives me nuts because we, we, we really just don't know how black holes work or if they are even what people are saying. For all we know, that could be an energy field that some other planet has mastered and they're just hiding within a black hole and we can't see it. But they like to say, oh, it just consumes things and it just goes nowhere. But that is a pretty crazy theory to think about. What do you guys think about this? You know all the dialogue that goes inside of your head? It is not you talking to yourself. It is you engaged with a series of conditioned thoughts and their associated characters. And those characters are actually carrying on a conversation and you happen to be, in quotes, in the middle of them because it is this consciousness to itself involved in all of that dialogue. So basically what this individual is saying is I have conversations going in my head and I'm just a nosy neighbor listening in on the conversations. <laughs> I mean, I feel like they're my own thoughts. I can literally think so many other thoughts within that thought. But is it really me thinking those thoughts or is it some other external source giving me those thoughts? You know, it's the freakiest shark I've ever seen in my life. The sizable arched jaws of the crocodile shark can be protruded beyond the tip of the snout and contain oh, large teeth shaped like spikes in front of knives on the side of its own. That's literally alien. Yeah. So it comes out of it, its actual yeah, face. Yeah. Dude, what in the world? That's alien. Dude, that is alien. That is the creepiest. That can't be real. Creepiest looking thing I've ever seen in my life. I get Sigourney Weaver. What's the point of that? <laughs> what is the point? I just, of that? Think, I just gets, get to deeper get, spots, maybe. Or does it get bigger? Like it can yeah. open its jaw bigger? Or oh something? yeah, probably because it is a hinge back, maybe yeah. the head. Or it's just a minimal movement lunge. Ew. How big do they get? Do we know? No idea. Twenty feet long. Shut up, no. <laughs> that is terrifying. I would hate to see a twenty foot long version of whatever that was because that's just not right. What is a skinwalker? A skinwalker is a shape-shifting demonic entity. It's essentially a, a Native American witch or warlock that, that sells their soul in exchange for immortality, the ability to take on the skin or shape-shift. Oftentimes, myself and the caretakers just saw a glowing object appear right outside of Homestead One or right outside of the ranch house and... I've got the images, and there are a lot of professionals who have remained silent, have not wanted to go public, that are now finally reaching out to our team and letting their stories be told. These are firsthand accounts of activity, evidence of transmedium, you know, unidentified aerial phenomena that was caught, captured coming down from the sky, dropping into the east field portion of the ranch, and then exiting right below the helicopter, caught on GoPro camera exiting the mesa 
And that was a quick turn from skinwalkers to UFOs. I was like, whoa, with so many things happening right there. But I am still interested in Skinwalker Ranch. I've had a couple of people told me not to really delve into the series itself. It's kind of a waste of time. But I've had some people tell me that this is a great show and I should actually watch it. So I think I'm just going to keep catching bits and pieces of it on TikTok or any other short form of content because I enjoy hearing about it. It's interesting to me. There's a theory that the Grand Canyon holds something that none of us knew was there. So back in the 1850s, right? The Grand Canyon was used to mine gold. Did you know that? Now, the Grand Canyon, when people started mining it, the gold index crashed because they found so much gold there. Okay. Now, what happened was the government and the military, they closed it off and they made it a sanctuary so that nobody can just go there and then take whatever they want. But there was this one guy, his name was Seth Tanner, and he was an explorer. He explored this one cave in the Grand Canyon and he claims what he saw was ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics in one of the caves. Oh, what did it say? Now, the theory is that the Grand Canyon, it actually holds the lost city of El Dorado. What? Like, the you know, the, the lost gold city of El Dorado. Yeah, the whole city. The man. whole city. So if you think about it, it's never found. The lost city, the gold city, never found. Now, the theory is that it's literally in the Grand Canyon, deep in these caves. And the reason the government and the world is trying to keep it a secret is because it would crash the gold price. That would be pretty crazy to see a whole city of gold within the Grand Canyon. That's where it's actually at. That would be awesome. I would enjoy that. But I don't know if I believe it or not. I do believe that there's something there. There's definitely something about the Grand Canyon that the government is keeping a secret. And it's not just because people were panning for gold. What is your thoughts on this? Do you have any idea or any theories of what could be in the Grand Canyon? Or do you think that it is just a place for gold mining? Because, I mean, it could very well be and there's no secret city or anything like that, but I'm curious. If you're about to drink cold water, do not. I can't believe I'm seeing this. Since when was water now? Nah, what? So, the other day I saw this video. If you're drinking cold water or even your cold beverages, listen up. This can have serious implications on your digestion. Chilled water as well. From a scientist doctor on TikTok. And it just absolutely baffled me. So basically what this guy was saying was the cold water is actually bad for you. Ah, oh, so stop drinking fizzy drinks. Stop drinking alcohol. Now stop drinking water. What can I flip and drink then? What? So yeah, apparently cold water is actually really, really bad for your body. So apparently it can cause serious implications to your digestive system. Contracts your blood vessels could even in a rare case kill you. No, it can't. Off. No, it can't. Now, when you drink warm water, you absorb all of the nutrients, but apparently with chilled water, it basically stops you absorbing the nutrients. So why have they been telling us to drink it then? All right then, mate, I'll just starve. I just won't drink, won't eat. Fine. Nah, screw that. I'm just going to enjoy my life. I literally do not care. Please let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on this. Hit that follow button, and I'll see you in the next one. Back in the early 2000s, when my cousin went to the military, he told me about drinking lukewarm water. It filtered through your body faster and it was better for you to drink if it was lukewarm and not cold. Me personally, I like a good cold glass of water. That's the best flavor of water to me. Like warm water is not that appealing to me. I can drink it, especially if I'm thirsty, but cold water just hits differently. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Like I mentioned in the mid-roll, if you're curious to see episode 101, that's going to be uploaded 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. And I hope to see you there. And with that being said, have a good day.